Chase Elliott took over the checkered flag of the Road America week, and right behind him, a lot of big sleeper plays that got lots of points, mainly around that bubble, such as Tyler Reddick, Kurt Busch, and Ross Chastain. And before we go over my picks for the Atlanta week this Sunday, let's look back at the Road America week and see what we got. I think it's really important to mention this because I made changes to my lineups after my video last week. The Jaguars won, I traded out Martin Truex Jr. for Tyler Reddick. And with Reddick scoring the most points that race, that was a very big change. We're talking a difference in 18 points. I swapped out my winning and top Chevrolet picks with Chase Elliott in favor of Kyle Larson, only because of the starting grid and Elliott moving to the rear. And a few of my other lineups did the same as well, which, okay, yeah, didn't really turn out very good. Never mind the bonus picks, the real blemish on each of my lineups you're going to see is AJ Allmendinger. After stage one, he just had issues all race long and stayed outside the top 25. Alex Bowman had a run-in with Kyle Larson with around seven or six laps to go, and I suppose he had damage from the contact afterwards because he ended up pitting and finishing 20 seconds. I say that because I actually didn't botch the race and had some outside help to make my garage picks, which turned out to be very easy. All of my lineups had Austin Sindrick, so that was a very easy garage right before stage two. Waste Elliott last week was even less fortunate. Instead of picking the driver to win the race, we picked the one that finished last with Austin Sindrick after I swapped out Joey Logano to win and top Ford. In favor of the young part-time Penske driver, I threw an AJ Allmendinger in place of Martin Truex also, which also didn't help waste Elliott's cause. But outside that, there are a few good starter plays that some of my other lineups would have wished they had, such as the Bush brothers, each of them scored at least 35 points, and earned a top 5 finish. Pick Stenhouse had some changes too, with Almondinger instead of Truex, yikes. But we did swap out Ryan Blaney in favor of Tyler Reddick, but just like Jack Wars 1, we took out the Chase Elliott and Top Chevrolet winning picks for Kyle Larson. And as a result, we got this lineup the exact same as Jack Wars 1, so this lineup also gets 169 points. In no Chevy, I swapped out Michael McDowell in favor of Christopher Bell, which rather than a 30th place finish, I got a runner-up finish with that. I swapped out the winning pick of Joey Logano for Chase Elliott, which I also did for Top Chevrolet after replacing Kyle Larson. Top Ford pick change really doesn't matter so long as it's not Chase Briscoe, and we swapped over Ford and Penske picks for Chevrolet and HMS. And after overhauling the bonus picks for No Chevy, we got 40 points from it. All the changes we made here made No Chevy the highest scoring roster from me from Road America at 182. So No Chevy, well done. Even though you seem to excel at tracks with heavy sleeper picks being optional. And for Jaguars World Network, pretty much the same result as picks in House and Jaguars 1. It also has 169 points. This lineup also ditched Ryan Blaney, but replaced it with Kurt Busch. Martin Truex also kicked the bucket for this lineup. In its place is Austin Sindrick. And we swapped out Kyle Busch in favor of Tyler Reddick. This lineup too swapped out winning and top Chevrolet picks of Chase Elliott for Kyle Larson. But the nice thing here is World Network saves a Chase Elliott play while still getting 169 points like the last two rosters, like Pick Stenhouse and Jaguars. And looking at the top 8 drivers with the most points from Road America, quite an oddball list of drivers. For one, the top 3 drivers are really weird. You got Tyler Reddick with 46, Ross Chastain with 44, and Kurt Busch with 41. That's by no means an easy prediction to make, having those 3 specific drivers. It's very much like the Bristol Dirt Race. And while also having Christopher Bell as a part of the top 5 with most drivers at 39 points, this makes for a very specific lineup if you want to have a high scoring day. If you're in the top 6,000 overall and you earn 169 points like me, then you still made ground on some players. It goes to show you with drivers like these earning the most points, it was a rather low scoring day in fantasy. And then rounding out the top 8, some premium plays that still get you more than 35 points with Denny Hamlin, Kyle Larson, and Kyle Busch. I think the most important driver to mention outside this top 8 group would be Chase Briscoe. He's the driver that earned the 9th most points with a 6th place finish for a total of 31 points. And so that's my results from Road America. Could be very much worse than that. It really started with all the picks from AJ Allmendinger and the incident with Alex Bowman and Kyle Larson. But I'd rather much have that kind of result with very expected drivers to do poorly than just have sleeper picks that crash instead. And so long as I gain spots in the overall standings, then can you really call it a bad day in fantasy? Let's look at the playoff cut line. This was a big race for Kurt Busch. He went from 3 points to the good to now 25 points to the good. 
On the flip side, Chris Buescher didn't quite get the day he wanted in order to keep up with Kurt. Neither did Bubba Wallace, who lost a few points to the cutoff line. Ross Chastain is a big day. He's now within 70 points of the cut line. But as we're approaching six races to go, if some of these drivers don't have big points today like Ross Chastain, they might have to rely on a track like Daytona and get a win in order to make the playoffs rather than point their way in. As it stands now in points, I do like Kurt Busch with more than most of these other drivers outside the cutoff line. So looking ahead to Atlanta, this is our first repeat race weekend. We've already raced here at Atlanta last March. And even though I have driver infos a lot more back then that you can probably look back on, I'll still give you a tier list for this July's Atlanta race. So most of the drivers from that week are still in their specific areas. Kyle Larson, Kevin Harvick are still going to be your top plays for Atlanta. You can't rule out either William Byron or Ryan Blaney as well. And of course Kyle Busch. Even if you're at one use remaining, you can very much use it up here and be good. But looking more in depth, Kevin Harvick, there's more than enough reason to play him. Even though Harvick is going to be starting from 21st due to his results at Road America, he's more than capable of getting his way to the front at Atlanta. Harvick is a must play even if you're at 3 remaining. At any less, you can try his hands next week at New Hampshire, and then the final play can be reserved for Michigan. Blind spot plays, yeah, a lot less this weekend. This race at Atlanta, you might want to go with the stud drivers and limit your sleeper picks or anyone below that top playlist to about one or two. For Atlanta, let's look at Austin Dillon, or rather most of his results in 550 horsepower package this year. At Charlotte, he did very well, scoring nearly 40 points. Kansas in early May, he's got a top 10 finish for a respectable 27 showing. And if you line up all of the tracks with Austin Dillon's best average finish, Atlanta is his last best remaining track. The next one in line is of course Daytona. Now whether or not you want to go with this play depends on how you feel about playing Austin Dillon. Brad Keselowski and Kurt Busch are also solid options for Atlanta. On top of that, their ownership percentages are suspected to be a lot higher than Austin Dillon. So for the more bolder blind spot players, go with Austin Dillon. Long shot plays are more centered around 550 horsepower specialists such as Chris Buescher and Ricky Stenhouse Jr. There's always Ross Chastain which is always a risky play just like Stenhouse. And then Daniel Suarez, he's always lurking around the top 15 for some underrated results. And ones that are far better than DNFs or top 25 finishes. But bringing back up Chris Buescher, his results this year are far better at 550 horsepower races. Outside Darlington, Busher's last top 10 results kept come on 550 horsepower tracks. This is for sure going to be a top pick for no Chevy. As for a serious lineup, you could probably fit him in the same category as I have Austin Dillon, Kurt Busch, and Brad Keselowski. If we forecast the ownership percentage for Busher, maybe take what Austin Dillon has currently and then reduce that by half. So if you consider playing Busher this week, put him in the garage and then load up on the stud drivers as the rest of your lineup. Play with caution, these lists of drivers have really had only one-off good results all year. I'm looking at Ryan Newman, his best result this year has come from the Bristol Dirt, and he's had some okay results in 550 horsepower rules, which are some that I'd rather take than the results he's had at road courses and other 750 horsepower rule package races. But if you really had to pick from that small group I have, it's Matt Benedetto. He's still very much on the battle in the race for the playoffs. In the March race, he scored the top 10 most points with 31, but it seems like a long time ago since those results. After Kansas, De Benedetto's results have fallen off drastically. That is until last week at Road America, where he finally posted another top 10 since Kansas. And so the 21 car play seems a bit more promising than play for caution, but you can very much treat this as a long shot play and just stash him in the garage, with the remaining bulk of your lineup being stud drivers, but say Kyle Larson, Kyle Busch, you know the deal. If say you're looking for a better track with De Benedetto in the regular season that's left, then among those tracks, New Hampshire has his best average finish at 13, and then of course Daytona, he's very much on my radar. Outside the Daytona 500, he can survive most super speedway races. And now for our avoids, even though Chase Elliott is on pole, I do not like the results that he's had at Atlanta. And this goes without saying, I still have my remaining usages with Chase Elliott booked for either Watkins Glen or Indianapolis with backups of either New Hampshire or Michigan, so that's more than enough reason to not play Chase Elliott this week. But an even more avoid than Chase Elliott would be Joey Logano. Now outside of his results at Pocono and Las Vegas, his results at 550 races have been atrocious. He's either not had speed or any luck at these kind of races. 
and the March racer is only good at slowing down Kyle Larson to help out his teammate Ryan Blaney win the race as he was about to go a lap down. On top of that, you have plenty of opportunities to play Lugano after Atlanta, such as New Hampshire and a few road courses even, at maybe Watkins Glen, and then of course Indianapolis. Michigan's a much better 550 track for him as well, if you really want to try and dip your toes with Joey Lugano at 550 tracks. But all you need to know with Joey Lugano is Atlanta is easily Joey's worst track remaining on the regular season. Pick either Ryan Blaney or Brad Keselowski if you want to go with the Penske camp. And those drivers will treat you far better than Joey could this week. And those are my picks for Atlanta, nothing too fancy, but I feel Atlanta is the half of tracks remaining that you should get your stud play drivers in. Next week at New Hampshire there's no telling who you could be playing since most drivers are going to be viable there. The race this Sunday at Atlanta is at 12.30pm Pacific Standard Time. No practice or qualifying for this race, just the algorithm setting the starting grid. Enjoy the Quaker Stake 400, I'll catch you next week for New Hampshire.